You're watching the SEC on ESPN. Soak it in, Bryant Denny Stadium in Tuscaloosa. Ranked teams have had big trouble today. Greg McElroy will find out if Tennessee can provide resistance for Alabama. We saw Penn State go down. We saw Oklahoma State go down. We'll see if there's trouble in Tuscaloosa. And this Tennessee team has progress the last few weeks. The big plays have started to come. And if they can create some big play opportunities against a defense that has had their fair share of ups and downs, this could get testy here in Tuscaloosa. Off we go. Tennessee will have it at the 25-yard line. Hendon Hooker into play quarterback for Tennessee, Katie George. Yeah, Jason, and there was certainly some concern throughout the week based on Hendon's availability, but Josh Heifel told me on Sunday he moved around a decent amount, which was a good sign, and then that movement just progressed throughout the week. And what a difference six days make, guys. Check this out. During warm-ups, he was doing his best Odell Beckham Jr. impression in the back of the end zone. I asked him how he's feeling. He said, I am all good. He didn't have to say that to you. If he's jumping like that. <laughs> I would say picture's worth a thousand words. And I'd be willing to say that he looked pretty good. Really fortunate, too, because it looked scary last week. And he's been a big reason for why Tennessee's moving in the right direction offensively. On first down, it is a run. It's Jabari Small, the sophomore out of Memphis. If you haven't seen Tennessee play, you're going to see about three plays a minute. Yeah, they play very fast. First pass, Bayless Jones Jr. on the outside. They love getting him the ball quickly, and it'll be third down and short. And getting him started, getting him involved early, but a critical third down because they really start to hit their tempo after they pick up that initial first down in the offensive drive. These are both fantastic third down converting teams. 50% or better, both of them. And that's going nowhere. Absolutely eaten alive by Federian Mathis. And with pressure off the left, you're just going to see Bama guys work across the Tennessee offensive lineman's face. Just an excellent job there by the Alabama defensive line. Byron Young was the first guy to arrive, but D.J. Dale was right there in the middle of that defense. It's an excellent job on third and short. So Alabama won the toss, deferred, and now gets the ball within a minute and a half as that punt from Paxton Brooks is a good one. Let's take a look at tonight's Chick-fil-A impact players. And for Alabama on offense, of course, so many playmakers. Tough to pick just two, but Brian Robinson's been a great presence between the tackles and on the perimeter at running back. Jamison Williams, the transfer from Ohio State, so much speed, that vertical speed, but has done a great job with the ball in his hands. And then defensively for Tennessee, Theo Jackson, extremely, extremely productive. He'll be in the nickel, going to be very important for him. And then along the front, they're going to have to be excellent with Byron Young presenting some pressure to the right side of that Alabama offensive line. First play from scrimmage for the Crimson Tide tonight. Young to throw quickly out of his hand and dropped by Jamison Williams. As you can see, trying to get one of the impact players involved early. Ball thrown early there. Good anticipation from Bryce Young. And as Jamison Williams gets his head around, just can't locate the ball quick enough, and it results in an incompletion. These Alabama receivers are so good after the catch. Might have been thinking about turning it upfield at second down. Right back into his hand, Jamison Williams on the outside, and he is clipped. Very short run for Jamison Williams, as that's a Hatton on the outside of the stop. See Bryce Young, not the biggest guy in the world, but extremely accurate, very decisive, and for a young player, does a really good job when he breaks contain, when he gets outside the pocket, remaining in a passing posture, that's when the big plays happen. Passing posture meaning? Meaning always ready to throw regardless of whether or not he's on the move. Bolden in motion, third down and seven. 
Young does have the connection right at the stick. And they will give the first down, it looks like, to Latu, the tight end. Great job there by Latu, understanding how far it was to pick up the first down. A lot of times, receivers and tight ends, in an effort to make sure they get open faster, they cut their route a little short. That time, he got all the depth needed for the first down. There's a good throw by Bryce Young. Ryan Robinson Jr. has seen a ton of touches the last three weeks, nearly 30 a game. And this is a guy who had 274 carries coming into this season. He's at 117 now. He waited his turn. He had some great ones around him, but he's transformed his body and has become more versatile at running back as opposed to just being the power downhill runner that he was the last few seasons. Local product from here in Tuscaloosa, Hillcrest High School, about 15 minutes south of the stadium as Theo Jackson, one of your impact players, got in third down. Good job there by Theo Jackson. Very instinctive player. And this Tennessee defense, they're going to be challenged tonight. Alabama throws a lot of looks at you. It's going to be imperative that the front four for Tennessee, particularly the defensive tackles, are very stout against the run because these linebackers and their secondary defenders are going to see an awful lot of different formations from Bill O'Brien, the offensive coordinator. Young on third down. Loads of time for Young. And he threw him open. Billingsley over the shoulder. First down. Khalil Billingsley is down after that catch. Such an important weapon for Alabama. He is. And hopefully he's okay. It looks like he's grabbing at his right arm. Landed kind of awkwardly as he made the back shoulder catch. We'll step aside as they check on Billingsley. Opening drive for Alabama. First down when we come back. Saturday night football next week presented by Capital One. Back in the Big Ten, it is Penn State now needing a bounce back, taking on Ohio State. And if that goes longer than today's Penn State game, that would be a shock after nine overtimes earlier. Billingsley goes out after getting spiked down on this catch. And you see him as he's going to the ground, put that right arm out, try to brace himself as he's about to make contact with the ground. And as he's walking to the sideline, you see the trainers kind of holding that arm stable. So we'll keep an eye on that. But big, big problem if he's unavailable because he was a big part of the game plan, it sounded like, for Bill O'Brien when talking to him this week. His playing time was building from the end of last year, and this out of the backfield is Roy Dell Williams. Tennessee was there on the flank. Alante Taylor playing corner for Tennessee after an injury. Sets up second down and long. And this Tennessee defense, while the offense has garnered an awful lot of praise, understandably so, too. They're a high-flying group, or at least they were the last few weeks. This defense has made some strides, too. They've been much better in the front seven than anticipated. And Alante Taylor on the perimeter leads what is a very physical secondary. Yeah, that defense in the second half last week against Ole Miss kept them in the ball game. Young to throw on second down to the outside. And Bolden, who tiptoes down the edge, Tennessee's coaching staff is pointing at the sideline where they think the shoe was for Bolden. And they'll look at that. Good job by Bryce Young getting to his outlet as he got through his progression. A good job, too, by the protection of Roy Dale Williams picking up Banks there on the internal pressure. And let's take a peek. Ooh, that left foot did look like it was a little bit closer. Yeah, he might have gotten a bonus yard or two there. Not much. Opening drive tonight for Alabama, third down and six for Young. Time again with some touch. First down, Jamison Williams across the 40. Alabama three for three on third down as a marker has come in at the end of the play. Personal foul. Here they go hands to the face. Defense number nine. It's a 15-yard penalty added to the end of the run. It's an automatic first down. Tyler Barron, the defensive lineman. You're going to see Barron as he's working. You'll see that hand to the face mask right there on the right side of your screen. Working against Brian Robinson, who's in protection. Really nice throw there. 
and unfortunate there for Tennessee. The pass rush was almost home, but Jamison Williams makes a play for the conversion. Robinson, more pressure in the defensive backfield. Tennessee has gotten in there. That was Trayvon Flowers, the safety, who was in first that time. Against Alabama, you're going to give up some yards, especially on first and second down. You're going to give up some yards between the 20s. They just have so much talent. But the way you can make them more human is when the field condenses, and they can't use that speed to their advantage. So in this part of the field, this is where Tennessee is going to have to play at their very best because red zone defense is of the utmost importance when you're playing a team that's as talented as Alabama. It's a couple of red zone misses all year. Bryce Young could have had an entire kettle of tea as Tennessee gave him a lot of room to roam. Young tracing through the defense, first down and goal. As you can see, his parents looking on, loving what they see. And Bryce Young here, three-man rush from Tennessee. Just three guys, so he knows he has forever. He can buy some time. This is pretty special right here. Ball in his hand, makes a guy miss, and turning what was a negative play into a positive play really quickly. He is past first, but when there's a running lane, he takes it, as does Robinson for the touchdown. Look, there's been a lot of talk about should Bryce Young run more? Should he use his feet more? He has always been, even going back to youth football, the guy who wants to pass first and not take what he thought when he was young as the easy way out to run the ball. He had it, he took it, and he set up an Alabama touchdown on a 12-play drive after the defense got him the ball quickly. Impressive stuff from the tide. 7-0 Alabama. ESPN College Football Primetime is presented by the Eat Fresh Refresh at Subway and in part by Liberty Mutual Insurance. Only pay for what you need. This is a long-standing rivalry, a great rivalry, and some of the wonderful program covers, old school face masks. We got everything here. <laughs> Fantastic. I mean, look, this rivalry has been so streaky, though. You know it. I, 14 straight for Alabama. Right before that, Tennessee had won 10 of 12. And I will say they've now outscored the first Tennessee win in the series back in 1904. It was five to nothing. Volunteers. Figure we would get a little further than that tonight. A couple CNI singles and yeah, maybe a right. couple pinch hits in, yeah. that, in that first game between the two. There was a great sack fly in the seventh. <laughs> 25 yard line for Tennessee into the studio, Matt Perry. Good evening, gentlemen. Happy SEC Saturday. This just wrapped up at the Rose Bowl. Ethan Garber's in. DTR was hurt, was moving UCLA down until he was picked off by DJ James. Oregon survives 34 31. How about Walton on game day? I thought it was going to be like 1245 Eastern when they finally got it to the game. <laughs> Direct to receiver Dorian Thompson Robinson. 7-0 uh, Alabama. Tennessee needs a first down here, wouldn't you say? Very much. Out of the backfield, Jabari Small, and he is very close to the line to gain. Josh Heupel in his first season at Tennessee. And look, he's trying to rebuild this program that's been through five coaches in the last decade and a half. He's done a great job. I mean, it was a difficult circumstance that he walked into. Thin roster, guys leaving into the portal. He's got them together now, and the offensive culture is being established. This is small, and he has wrestled back. Will Anderson, Jr., who absolutely exploded last week, was not going to let him at the line of game. You referenced it a second ago. This Tennessee offensive line not at 100%. Running it between the tackles is going to be very difficult. 
Third and one, Hendon Hooker pops it over the top for Small down the sideline. And Hendon Hooker roaming okay. He got hit pretty well that time, Greg. Yeah, he did. That was a great job of making the defender commit. Watch him make the defender come up. Ooh, be careful there if you're Malachi Moore. This is incomplete. Yeah, he did launch a little bit with the Ooh. shoulder. Didn't make the forcible contact to the head as it's second down for a hooker in Tennessee. Malachi Moore got tossed early in the Texas A&M game and that was a huge turning point in the game. That time he did have the upward thrust but he missed fortunately for Alabama. But that was a great job by Hooker bringing the defender in. Long ball down the sideline from Hooker and he's got it to Cedric Tillman for a first down and a huge game. Gain a 39 for Tennessee, first and 10 from the 11. Hooker, end zone incomplete for Fant, the tight end. And let's go back to that big play, working these slot go balls. And this time, he gets Tillman behind the defense, ball slightly underthrown, a better throws of touchdown as he got behind Daniel Wright, but a great job by Tillman, high point in the football and making the catch. The rare long ball hit this year for Tennessee as this is Tyon Evans back from the ankle injury there have been a lot of misses downfield for Tennessee that can change the game if they can hit on those absolutely it's left so many plays on the field in the first few games but that's been why the offense has come alive those long balls have started to connect third and seven Hendon Hooker down the middle for a touchdown, Tennessee and Bayless Jones. Great answer from the Tennessee Volunteers. We might have a game here tonight in Tuscaloosa. Some spunk from Tennessee. And Valus Jones finds a perfect matchup. He has the safety outside. He breaks it in. Hendon Hooker finds him. And the Volunteers have life here in Tuscaloosa. We're back in Tuscaloosa where the Vols just tied it up at seven apiece and head coach Nick Saban was unhappy with the coverage on that last touchdown. He beelined over to the defense on the sideline here for Alabama. He exchanged words with Malachi Moore as well as Jordan Battle. It got heated but then he ended by applauding them, asking them to refocus and get back in the game. Greg, what'd you see on that busted coverage? I will show you in just a second after this kick because it was really poor alignment from Alabama. Jamison Williams back to receive. How poor of alignment. Oh. When you have outside leverage of a wide receiver, there has to be someone in the middle. Unfortunately for Alabama, there's nobody in the middle. So where does Tennessee work? That vacated area. If you have outside leverage, that means there has to be someone that you're funneling the receiver into. That time, no one there for Alabama. Easy pitch and catch from Hendon Hooker. And a great drive and a response from Tennessee taking advantage of the misalignment of Alabama. That's the tempo. That's what tempo can do. It can get you out of alignment. You can get some cheap ones. It's exactly what Tennessee took advantage of there. Nick Saban talked about the rhythm that he feels like football players get into and how that tempo breaks the rhythm. And an open look for the touchdown as Alabama gets it back for its second drive of the ball game. Robinson. Spike down after a short gain, just a couple of yards. Young man who, again, the amount of carries has grown in a major way, but he was a star here in Tuscaloosa. 447 yards in one game at Hillcrest High School down the road apiece, and he has been a major part of this offense the last couple of weeks. Very much so, and a lot of people wondering if he would be the bell cow that he's turned into, and man, has he answered the challenge. Young climbing the pocket, spits it out. He has a lot to the tight end across midfield. And a first down, Alabama. 
Now Latu is down. So Billingsley already out. Latu is injured for Alabama. Two tight ends in the first nine and change in this game have gone down. They do expect Billingsley to come back at some point tonight as they check on Latu. I want you to watch the linebacker here, Aaron Beasley. He's lined up right here. His eyes, after he collisions the tight end out, his eyes go to the back. Watch him get the collision. He bangs him, and then he comes back. And look, Bryce Young attacks the line of scrimmage, which buys Beasley towards the quarterback, thinking he's about to clean the quarterback's clock. Boom, Bryce Young spits it out to the tight end with a lot of green grass. Just excellent job there by the quarterback, but hopefully Latu can be okay. He has been huge as an end man on the line of scrimmage, not just receiving the football, Jason, but also providing necessary protection on the edges when the tackles are struggling. Well, there's good news right there, Greg, with Billingsley back in with Latu going out. Quick hit for Mechie. So great after the catch, and he gets belted down to the 40-yard line by Aaron Beasley. How advanced is the vision of Bryce Young and his decision making. He's like a point guard, man. He just has unbelievable peripheral vision where he can just see guys without looking at him. Not Mahomes like no one's that level of freakish of nature. <laughs> that guy's unbelievable. Right. But Bryce Young has some of those tendencies and in time those instincts will develop. It'll be a little while till he buys himself a baseball team like <laughs> Mahomes has in middle America. Quick throw, this is Bolden leaning in the head for the first down against Hatton again. Alabama moving the ball pretty well at will against Tennessee. And doing a good job, Tennessee so far selling out between the tackles, trying to limit and stymie the run game. Alabama's making their hay on the perimeter by getting guys in space and getting those linebackers for Tennessee running sideline to sideline. Robinson, little hesitation. So with that, with Tennessee running sideline to sideline, what's the fix for Tim Banks in Tennessee? It's not easy because when you think about what Alabama forces you to do with their RPOs and some of those other things, you can't really play a lot of zone coverage against them because they're going to take advantage of your eyes being in the backfield. So the way you neutralize RPOs is by playing more man-to-man -man coverage. So when you're in man and you're still running sideline to sideline, that can get very tricky because of the misdirection. This is Matthew Butler, the senior out of Raleigh who is down. He had a big game against Ole Miss, a couple of sacks, forced a fumble as well. He would be a big loss for the Volunteers. And hopefully he's okay because this defensive line and they've done a great job too but they are not outrageously deep. So they need to stay healthy as much as anybody in the entire SEC. Yeah, they're thin everywhere. Every Saturday Marty and McGee at SEC Nation bring you extensive game previews in the SEC. Some guests that you might not find anywhere else. Sometimes they're having fun in a cornfield evidently. Uh, they'll be in Jacksonville for Georgia and Florida next week. Coverage starts 9 a.m. on SEC Network and the ESPN app. I know there's plenty of cornfields down here, but when I think cornfield, I think Iowa. I don't know. It's probably Field of Dreams. Yeah. I, I, you think I, they were up there in Iowa, perhaps? It looked like it. Uh, it Frank Thomas now owns the Field of Dreams. Is so that true? Had, yeah, he just bought it wow. a couple of weeks ago. He bought it from Kevin Costner? He did, well, from a holding company, I think. Ah, gotcha, yeah. okay. Yeah. yeah, Kevin Costner said he'd never sell in the movie, so I'm just a little bit thrown off by that. Greg, we've not worked together a lot, but I have to tell you, don't believe everything you see in the movies. <laughs> Understandable. Will Ferrell is not actually an elf. <laughs> Wait, hang on. But he knows Santa. He does. Yes. Second down and nine for Alabama, under four to go. Quarter number one as Butler has come off. Empty for Young. Pressure gets there. Young gets wrestled down. That's Byron Young who got into the backfield. A tremendous story out of South Carolina by way of Georgia at its third and long. 
just a great game up front. You're going to see movement all throughout. And that was exactly what allowed Young to squeak through. He's one of the impact players. He's one of the few guys on this Tennessee roster that can create his own pass rush. That time, though, didn't create his own. They did the game. He broke free and dropped Young for a loss. It's third and 12 for Alabama. Got to get to the 24-yard line. Young loads it up. Williams had to come back and it's incomplete. The ball was on the ground. Williams didn't make the play. Set out fourth down and a decision for Alabama. A tough spot here too because you're looking at a 53 54 yard field goal. Great effort there from Williams as you see the ball just squeak free at the end. Just a little bit off the mark there from Bryce Young and it looked like Williams came just a little bit more inside than Bryce Young anticipated. Good job by Tennessee's defense though on second and third down getting Bama behind the sticks and forcing the incompletion. So Reichard for a career long. And this is just short. It's an interesting choice there for the field goal for Alabama but as you said sort of no man's land. Tied at seven, the reason for the field goal try was Byron Young, Katie, a tremendous story. Yeah, Jason, he had offers coming out of high school, but he said he didn't have the grades. So after a quick stint at a prep school that unfolded, Young took a job at Dollar General, where he worked as an assistant manager for 18 months. One day after work, he saw an ad for open tryouts at Georgia Military Academy. He showed up, he wowed at the JUCO tryout, continued to wow in the 2019 season. His tape, body, speed got him noticed by Tennessee. He says he's now living his dream out at Tennessee, and he hopes his story proves to young people, just bet on yourself. It can change the course of your life. I love that. Absolutely love that story. I mean, just with all of the scouting services and everything out there, you know, he was an assistant manager at Dollar General for a couple of years. And that tryout, he found it was off a flyer. I mean, the luck to figure that out and for have the, to have this kid have his talents come out in the SEC, just a fantastic story for Tennessee as a flag comes in on the run from Tyon Evans. Personal foul, top block, offense number 75 and number 58. It's a 15-yard penalty, still second down. We've talked about how thin Tennessee is in a couple of places. Offensive line is certainly one of them. They're without their right tackle, Cade Mays. That was Jerome Carvin on the penalty. Yeah, and this is a difficult spot, too, especially without Cade Mays. Maybe your best pound-for-pound -pound offensive lineman, him being out and Dane Davis being in the lineup, extremely difficult for Alex Golish who has to be very thoughtful with his formations because Alabama with Will Anderson on the edge working against a backup tackle, that's a problem for the Vols. And a marker comes down. There's going to be a false start against that offensive line. This crowd knows what it's doing. First door was closed. Hendon Hooker chased by Anderson who got the first hit and Christian Harris cleans it up. Nick Saban told us Christian Harris has to play better. That's a start. It most certainly was and a great job too by Will Anderson. As Tennessee way backed up. got to think they go conservative here. Yeah, no value in a deep ball. Alabama gets the stop. That was Toll Toll, the linebacker, playing against his former team, the Tennessee Volunteers. He is very well liked on that Tennessee sideline. And uh, there might be some bragging rights by the end of the game for him or for his former teammates as this is Tyon Evans who's down for the volunteers and hopefully he's OK this running back group for Tennessee Tyon Evans especially has been banged up 
throughout the course of the season. So very thin at that spot, and hopefully he's okay. And back to To'o To'o, he's a, one of the best examples of the modern day college football experience because it's a young man that has nothing but love and admiration for Tennessee, but just felt like he had to have a better opportunity with everything that was going on. He still loves Tennessee, but he's playing for the top. Punter Paxton Brooks just got cleaned out and a marker comes in, so we will see if Tennessee gets roughing the kicker here. Personal foul, roughing the kicker, defense on the 41. To the 15-yard penalty from the previous spot, the automatic first down. It's Braswell, the sophomore linebacker. And I don't know how you can make this decision. As you see Braswell, Coming off the right-hand side, him along with four of his teammates just taking out the punter, complete lack of awareness. And on third and fourth and forever, fourth and 23 to give up a fresh set of downs of the Volunteers, that's the type of thing that Nick Saban will lose his mind. He already has. <laughs> Understandably so, just complete lack of awareness. When there's a punt block called, the coach is essentially trusting you to make a good decision if you can't get there. That time, not the case for the Tide Punt Block unit. Small in motion, this is small, and Anderson again runs him down. The Terminator for Alabama at second down. Look, Hendon Hooker, there was some question as we set off the top whether or not he'd play in this game, and Alex Golish, his offensive coordinator, said, he is even tougher than I ever expected when we first got him. This down the middle is right on target and a big breakaway for Tennessee's touchdown. Javante Payton takes it all the way. And Nick Saban has got to be thinking that's why that penalty is just unacceptable. McGrath for the extra point. And suddenly this place which was surging now has a hush over it as Tennessee's taken a lead. Nick Saban is absolutely enraged. Let's take a look at the touchdown. Here's Battle right here. His eyes are in the backfield, and he is way too shallow. And there's nothing but plenty of opportunity with a big old block of space between the numbers and the left hash. I mean, Battle never retreats. He's the deep safety. He has to stay deeper than the deepest. He doesn't. And as a result, Peyton catches the glance. And he is out the gate after making a guy miss. Just a thing of beauty from Hendon Hooker. And yet another really poor alignment from Alabama and their safeties. So this all happened because of this roughing the kicker penalty. But I want to ask you, you've talked about alignment a couple times. Who is this on for Alabama? Because it's happened twice for touchdowns. And the safeties right now are completely misaligned. I mean, for that play, battle was seven or eight yards deep and as the middle free safety you have to stay deeper than that. Wilson kicks it off. It's a short kick and Alabama will have it at the 29 as we check in with Matt Berry in the studio. Hi guys time. How about that Matt Berry thank you a view from our AT&T 5G sky cam as Alabama gets it back and Bryce Young off play action. Loads it up. He's got the tight end Latu who's back in the ball game. So both tight ends have returned for Alabama and it's first down tied. A good job there. Tennessee securing momentum as you see Alante Taylor now for Tennessee. Big collision between him and the 250 pound Latu. Hopefully Alante Taylor's okay. So tough, so physical there on the perimeter. And the guy that Tennessee just absolutely cannot be without. All right, here's a guy who started as a true freshman in 2018. He's a senior out of the state of Tennessee. 
and he just ran into a former defensive player converted to tight end and lot to but you wonder how many players Tennessee can lose and still keep the spirit I mean major credit to me to Josh Heupel as you watch this team on tape as thin as they are they are game competition yeah. and four and three and they have done a great job and Josh Heupel deserves a ton of credit for the way he's put them in position to be successful. Fans don't forget to check out the Great Clips Command Center broadcast of this game streaming now on ESPN 3 and the ESPN app. Some great views great angles on the app. Provided by our wonderful crew as Taylor comes out. Bryce Young very soft spoken young man born in Philadelphia moved to California moved around a lot as a kid. And an exceptional talent for Alabama. Motion from Bolden so far tonight. Young snaps off a deep ball. Jamison Williams incomplete a little too much. Wow, and it's not easy to overthrow Jamison Williams, one of the fastest guys in college football. And this one just a little out of the reach of Jamison as he gives it a great effort. This is a play they've run over and over again with a ton of success. That time, unable to connect. Final play quarter number one Alabama trailing Tennessee by seven. Robinson. Man he's so good after first contact. All day long it's been perilous for ranked teams and Alabama is no exception. Tennessee leads in Tuscaloosa at the end of one. You're watching the SEC on ESPN and you're watching a major rarity Alabama down seven after one first time in nine years that's happened. Nick Saban frustrated with his defense frustrated at a penalty and now third and one for Alabama. Young. Drops it off Robinson loads of space for Robinson and he's out of bounds at the 25 first down. Great job there. By Bryce Young knowing that a shot play was called by offensive coordinator Bill O'Brien it's not there. Check it down. Pick up the first down and now you're knocking on the door of the red zone. Just excellent job getting through your progresses not forcing it and taking what the defense eventually gave up. Young and Bill O'Brien both told us they are basically of one mind on the game plan on a weekly basis. Bryce Young a lot of say so on what to run. Pressure from the corner. He spits it out and so does Williams. It's taken away by Tennessee and George. That is a catch and a fumble for Alabama. And Tennessee gets another big play. And the band that Peyton Manning once famously conducted is fired up. And a great job here by Bryce Young seeing the pressure knowing that Theo Jackson's unblocked throws a strike. But how about the job defensively knocking the ball free. Just excellent job there by the Tennessee Volunteers. That's Haddon who knocked it out. And then tracking to the football and stopping the Crimson Tide in the red zone. Just excellent pursuit of the football from the Volunteers. Who are now in their last six games plus nine in turnover margin. Loud in that end zone, Hendon Hooker gets knocked down at the 16. And talking to Golish, his offensive coordinator, he said, Hendon Hooker doesn't run like you'd ever want a quarterback to run, but it gets the job done. Uh, he does a really good job being decisive when he runs. 
On the ground, Tennessee and Tyon Evans. Alabama trying to strip the ball, and this is a big early third down in the second quarter. Yeah, massive for Tennessee as Alex Golish looks on, and they have not done a great job between the tackles here. Trying to get to the outside. That is stood up and dropped. Toll, toll, finished the deal, but a marker is in as well. It is so loud in here, nobody stopped. Big penalty there as Tennessee tried to catch Alabama off guard by snapping it quick. And they're backed up to the student section, one of the loudest parts of the field here in Bryant Denny. And a whistle, and a flag, another. Time for Tennessee. You see Pete Golding there, the defensive coordinator for Alabama, fired up after the sudden change. The momentum swinging quickly to the side of the Tennessee Volunteers. Pete Golding's defense gets a much needed stop after a couple of self inflicted errors before the snap by the Volunteers' offensive line. You would imagine Alabama would steer clear of Paxton Brooks here, even though he's in his end zone, and it is, in fact, not a punt rush coming as a marker is in again on the punt. And Alabama will get it back, will check the flag. You know, it strikes me that those students over there who have not seen Alabama lose a lot to Tennessee still know the history of this rivalry. Illegal formation, offense number 18 is not on the line of scrimmage. This five yard penalty will be added to the end of the kick. First down, Alabama. Now the Crimson Tide has tremendous field position off that punt and penalty. Short field for the Tide when we come back in a seven point game. The Emma fans don't need to see any more of Aeneas Smith after a couple weeks ago. Chance to take a shot here, first down? Yeah, in this part of the field, short field plus 44 yard line. This is where Alabama and Bill O'Brien would traditionally try to throw it over your head. I'm going to throw it back for Mechie. This is a running play officially, and Mechie does get to the outside of the 36 yard line off a block from Treshawn Holden in his second down. Even here, in second and short, the way you're running the football, you can take a shot here as well. Come back, even if incomplete, got a chance to play third and short as well. Second down run instead. It's Robinson crashing forward for the first down for Alabama. Alabama has held the ball for more than 10 minutes of this game, nearly double the time of Tennessee, but some Crimson Tide mistakes have been a problem and had Tennessee up seven. High snap. Robinson stayed in to block. Mechie on the outside skates by one and turns it upfield. Haddon didn't have a chance when Mechie met him and a nice run after the catch again for the Canadian wide receiver. He is so slick in the open field. He really is and they have really complimented each other nicely. Mechie and Williams with Williams ability to create now with the ball in his hands as well. Very dynamic on the perimeter are the Crimson Tide.
on first down. Young, a dart. He's got Mechie, and it's first and goal for Alabama. Great job here by Bryce Young off the RPO, recognizing the one-on-one -on -one coverage and leverage. So he can work that inside slant to Mechie. Very accurate throw. Sets up first and goal. So talented in space, former soccer player growing up. He has a lacrosse background as well. They will run. Robinson seeking that hole. And it's second down and goal for Alabama. In this part of the field, the biggest point of emphasis since the Texas A&M game is pound the football. Bill O'Brien admitted that probably had a few too many freedoms for Bryce Young to throw the football down here. But when you get to this part, Alabama is still Alabama. Even though the offense has changed, it's about pounding it and running the ball into the end zone of this part. As shown by Nick Saban using his veto power recently down in the red zone. And his third and goal on another run as Butler, who's back in on that defensive line, got the stop. So what's your call here, Greg McElroy? What do you like? Well, I like goal. to try to create a matchup. And the matchups I always like to create are the biggest bodies on the field. Which usually means the tight ends. If you look at Bill O'Brien, I want to try to find a matchup for Jaleel Billingsley. He's lined up in a traditional tight end set to the left side of the screen at the end of the line of scrimmage right here. If I can find a matchup for number 19, that's the one I want to take advantage of. The motion Robinson behind him. Four to snap it. Young scanning. Young out of the pocket. On the move. And in. Bryce Young's family thrilled with his performance so far as Alabama is an extra point away from tying it. Now we have dueling celebrations after touchdowns in this rivalry game. Reichard slides it through. Just a great job here by the Crimson Tide. Getting to the red zone again, this time punching it in. Bryce Young not liking anything downfield, buying some time. Seeing his eyes, not liking it, taking it himself. As Nick Saban comes over to congratulate QB1. Top-notch tailgating here in Tuscaloosa. They even had a Jenga tower, which is, I don't know, maybe an analogy for Penn State and Oklahoma State's chances in the college football playoff, the Jenga Tower. That's a little too soon, isn't it? It might be a little too soon, <laughs> but they might not be watching. It's Alabama's defense coming on the field. What I've, I've, what I've said to you guys, you know, we have to do a better job. Football has to be the most important thing. That's the biggest thing when you come to Alabama. That's the standard. Football is the most important thing, and that's what I express to the team, and that's what it has to be, and it's going to be that. Four sacks, six total tackles. I found out this week Will Anderson's nickname is the Terminator for obvious reasons. Jury's still out if he actually likes that nickname. But Henry Toto says he has that match me mentality, meaning he elevates the play of everyone around him. He expects you to match his intensity, his work ethic, and his preparation. Everybody loves the Terminator on this team, guys. He still hasn't seen the movie yet, though. Hey. <laughs> I've seen it. Does that count for something? I think surely, it does. Surely he's seen Judgment Day. I, I, I think you're pricing yourself out <laughs> age-wise, Greg. I'm sorry. On a second down run, and that is a big hit for Alabama and Malachi Moore third down. Yeah, and it's amazingly helpful for Nick Saban and the staff. When your best player is also your hardest worker, that's a recipe for success, and that's exactly what Will Anderson's been for this defense. And they get there. This is Christian Harris who got in along with To'o To'o, the former volunteer. Yeah, and a great job here by Christian Harris. You see him just work right in that inside A-gap. 
as the right tackle Sproggins unable to close it. Good job by the linebackers. Issued a challenge this week from Nick Saban and Pete Golding. Those guys have to be better. They're the erasers. They're the backbone of the defense, and they haven't been playing to that standard. Well, they've responded so far tonight. A nice job there on third and short. To Katie's point on Anderson, though, he makes the people around him better as Alabama gets a stop. We're tied at 14, and Matt Berry in the studio. Estimate Tom Allen's ability to motivate in a major underdog situation. Yeah, he did it last year against Ohio State in the second half by game got sideways quick, and yet Indiana was within striking distance as the final bell rang. Ohio State, Penn State next week in prime time. Roy Dell Williams finds a crease on a first down run, and Tyler Barron drops him. So far, Tennessee's done a really good job in this defense up the middle. You got to think at some point, Roy Dell Williams and also Brian Robinson, they're going to start getting some touches on the perimeter. See if you can't continue to make this Tennessee defense roam. Maybe that helps you later on in the ball game as well. Alabama has seen the ball for a good chunk of this game. Second down, quick set. Jamison Williams slips against Taylor, who's back in, and it's first down, Alabama. He's going to have to continue to start swapping up the looks. Tim Banks, the defensive coordinator, has done a great job so far. Hasn't made it easy. You're going to give up some yards against Alabama, but you got to tighten the screws on third down. You can't give up the big plays over the top. Talked about that in terms of keeping your eyes in the right place for the Tennessee defense. Williams again. Oh my goodness, just a battering ram on a first down run. Brandon Turnage, the former Crimson Tide corner, just got a faceful. Yeah, he's just standing on the tracks with a train coming through Ooh. as you see Turnage. Good Jay made the tackle. You don't have to draw a picture on the scorecard, man, but he wore it. Good run there, a good physical run by Williams. That was a big old hit. Second down. Williams again. And this time he's bottled up, so another third down and medium set up by the Tennessee defense. Critical down and distance here for the Tennessee defense. So far, Alabama has been five of six on third downs. Has really done a great job of extending drives. Getting off the field here would be massive for the Volunteers. Alabama third in the nation, third down conversions just to Coastal Carolina and Ohio State coming into the week. He looked at Robinson, he went down the middle for Mechie instead. First down to Tennessee territory in the 45. Big first half for Mechie. And a nice job here. You're going to see two underneath shallow cross routes. Those are meshes. Those are built to beat man. But when it's zone, you have Met Mechie sitting right behind it. When you say meshes and Mechie in the same mm. sentence, it's a tough one. But that's a great job settling in the zone. And Bryce Young throwing a strike on the over the ball route. Just combine them for a meshy route. <laughs> First down under five to go. Young to Mechie again in space. Mechie high stepping out of bounds. He is so ultra athletic. Turnage again took him to the paint. It's again at 12. And you're constantly seeing this Alabama defense, and they are forcing Tennessee to cover all 52 yards wide of the field. I mean, you see volunteer players and Alabama receivers catching balls way outside the pat, way outside the numbers at the line of scrimmage with a lot of room to run. Bryce Young again giving ground this time. A marker is in, and this is incomplete. We'll check the flag as he took a big hit from Butler. Skycam always wants some camera time. It's almost like illegal motion. Yeah. Offense. The player is moving forward at the snap. 
Five yard penalty. So first down. In arena football, that's legal. <laughs> also in Canada. But this was this was a kind of a really close on the motion. Just got a little bit of a head start, but the hit was massive there on Bryce Young. Those are not the hits you want your 195-pound quarterback taking on a regular basis. As you see him move just a little bit. Good job of contain from Tennessee's defense, and Butler drops him. Big strike there from Le the Vols. Legal hit. Very legal. No, it was a very, very good, solid hit from Tennessee's defense. They'll let Robinson work. Hopping away from tacklers. Robinson drops the shoulder into Taylor. And as a first down, Taylor wanted to wrench it free. But Robinson had a vice grip on the ball. And this is what's changed for Robinson. I mean, nothing's really there initially, but he finds the back door. He, at one point in his career, would have just run hard into contact, vertical, north and south. Now he can dance, and he can still bring the boom like he does at the end of the run. His cousin called him Big B growing up, and you can see why, as it's first down from the edge of the red zone for Alabama. Young, short set, and Bolden for a short game. I'll tell you what, this rivalry that's been Alabama 14 and 0 with Nick Saban here. Again, it's a streaky rivalry, very low scoring early on, some major moments with Roman Harper and his fumble situation a decade and a half ago, and some plays that resonate for years. We got a tight one again tonight. Second down. Young. Too much for Jamison Williams with Taylor. Very close there as the defender. McCullough for Tennessee was closing on that double post. An accurate throw would have resulted in a huge hit or even an interception. Big third down here for the Volunteers defense. Keep an eye, 12 personnel, two tight ends in the ball game for the Crimson Tide. See if they try to get those two tight ends involved in the pass game. Billings lead top of the screen, came across the middle. Young's got his eyes upfield. Young staggering to the outside, turns it up and gets out of bounds. And he's got the line to gain first and goal. Just a great run here by Bryce Young. Excellent coverage from Tennessee. Nothing open. Bryce buys time. But here's make the guy miss. Alante Taylor goes flying. That was the only guy he had to make miss. You get a one-on-one. -on -one. Your corner's got to make the play there, and the senior can't drop the quarterback. You see the basketball history there. One-on-one -on -one for Bryce Young with a lower body. First and goal. Young, slant, Mechie, touchdown. Poster for those guys in the uh, orange and white overalls. As we have a whistle before the extra point. Tennessee player is down as Bryce Young watches. Looks like Tyler Barron. Two oh one in the air. Some great decisions on the ground. A couple of touchdowns for Bryce Young. Back to the touchdown. Yeah, it was a great throw from Bryce Young. Very tight window, and I think everybody, Alabama fans, Tennessee fans, Tennessee coaches, shocked at Alabama. This part of the field, they actually threw the ball for the first time since the Texas A&M game, and this time it results in a touchdown. Just a very nice throw there on the slant to Mechie. Excellent job holding it. 
by Bryce Young and fitting it in what was a very small, small window. Excellent throw and catch by the quarterback and the wide receiver. Barron's trying to get off the field now for Josh Heupel in Tennessee with 234 left three timeouts. Alabama gets the ball at a halftime. This is a crucial drive for Tennessee early in this ballgame. The good news is when you run tempo and that's your identity two minute drills ain't much of it. It doesn't yeah, change who you minute. are. Yeah. You're right. They are very comfortable of course executing with precision but the big thing is not leaving any time on the field for Alabama to potentially go steal some points. With three timeouts left for the Crimson Tide. Alabama took 518 off the clock and has 14 in a row here in the second quarter. Nine overtimes with the new overtime rules that were meant to shorten overtime games. And by the way, last time Tennessee won in Tuscaloosa, it was a five overtime game back in 2003. Casey Clawson to James Banks all night long. But Alabama has retaken the lead after being in something of a dark place about 15 minutes ago. Like, take a look at tonight's player's spotlight brought to you by Royal Caribbean. It is Hendon Hooker back from injury with a couple of touchdowns. He's been fantastic, and the run game hasn't really helped him because so far Alabama's done a great job of taking away that internal run game. But man, has he taken advantage on the throws, the intermediate passing attack, and of course taking advantage of a couple one-on-ones. They've got to continue to try to do that, find advantages on the perimeter because Tennessee's at their very best offensively when they're being able to push the ball downfield. They've only run 22 plays in this first half and another whistle. This would be Tennessee's seventh penalty. And these just can't happen. I mean, Alabama really hasn't done a whole lot to Tennessee and yet Tennessee continues to play behind the sticks. They cannot continue to shoot themselves in the foot before the snap. That was the receiver Tillman. Evans the running back has a false start as well in the game. First and 15. Off the low snap. Javante Payton who had the touchdown of 57 yards earlier. Second down coming up for Hendon Hooker the Virginia Tech transfer in this Tennessee offense. And I would not play very fast here if I were Tennessee. Just knowing how explosive and potent that Alabama offense is. Another whistle. Another whistle pre snap. Prior to snap, full start, offense number four. I'm going to to so what I would ask you though is if you play fast how do you ask your team to do something you don't normally do. Well you I mean you're playing fast if the false starts are coming as a result of receivers getting an early start everyone's just a little bit on their toes they need to collectively take a deep breath communicate use your nonverbal communication because the more you back up especially in this part of the field the more difficult it's going to become and it's to get, keep their poise getting louder too with every moment. Down the middle a strike from Hendon Hooker to Cedric Tillman and it's third down as they escape that end zone briefly. And they just continue to do these things. They're doing a great job moving the football. They've been their own worst enemy. Oh for their last two on third down and this is a big one. Floated to the sideline, incomplete, and here comes the crowd. Right there, your first instinct as a quarterback when you break contain is throw it away. That was a signal for punt safe, by the way, from Nick Saban. Correct. Punt safe, meaning be aware for any fake that Tennessee might throw at you. But back to the third down play, Hendon Hooker could have taken a sack right there. Made it fourth and four, forced Alabama to burn a timeout. That right there was not a smart play by the quarterback who threw it away to stop the clock. Punt safe also because 
I don't know that Alabama is going to rush the kicker very soon after the roughing penalty earlier. Alabama's got 100 seconds and Bryce Young up seven when we come back. Taco Bell welcomes you to the Live Mod Student Section of the Year Contest. Use hashtag student section sauce to get the committee's attention and go to ESPN.com slash Taco Bell to see how your school can compete. Buck 40 for Alabama, first down from the 16, Greg. It's more of an indicator at this point of the field. It's all about field position. Obviously, Alabama would love with three timeouts in their hip pocket to try to steal some points before the half. And the first play might indicate exactly how fast they want to play. They do get the ball out of halftime as well after deferring off the toss. So it's a run for Robinson. And now if you're Tennessee, do you use a timeout? Not yet. After the second down stop, I would call timeout, but I would wait just a half second. You've played really well. Don't give Alabama extra incentive to potentially ramp up the speed. So with that, a loss of one, do you just run it again conservatively? That's what Nick Saban would traditionally do. If you're backed up in this part of the field, if you run, increase one, you get out to, say, the 30, then you start to get to your two-minute operation. But too many bad things can happen if you go two-minute when you're backed up in the shadow of your own goalpost. Robinson has a crease Robinson to the 26 and he's got a first down for Alabama with 51 seconds. Now quick to the line young for Robinson who does get out of bounds now as a marker is going to come in on a late hit. Jeremy Banks with a shove of Robinson and that is completely needless. Josh Heupel obviously really doesn't like him. And that didn't look too egregious. Let's see. As you can see hanging on. After the play, personal foul, late hit, defense number 13. This is a 15 yard penalty added to the end of the run with an automatic first down. I would say watch the right leg there. He right. kind of thrusts with the lower body, don't you think? A little bit, yeah. I mean, was it a little too much? Perhaps. I don't like the call. I uh, just, I mean, you have a 240-pound running back. I mean, how do you want to bring him down? I mean, <laughs> it was obviously late, and you got to be smarter if you're banks. You cannot make that mistake. But if I were the official on that side, I would have kept the flag in my pocket. That is nine penalties against Tennessee for nearly a football field. Bryce Young down at the 50 timeout Alabama likely coming. So 32 seconds for the Crimson Tide two timeouts left. And don't forget week seven Monday night football coming up on Monday in just a couple of days the Saints are in Seattle trying to get healthy to take on the Seahawks 8 Eastern on ESPN Monday night countdown at 6. It's been 11 years since that Marshawn Lynch playoff run in Seattle against the Saints. We're all getting old by the way. Uh, look Alabama's up 7. Tennessee's been resilient all year and in this game. Yeah they have and they, and they battled back. They really did a great job coming out of the gates. I mean on both sides of the football. What they have to get addressed if you're Tennessee, you have to get off the field on third down. So far, they have been really bad and struggled getting off the field on third down. And they got to find a way to provide a little bit of balance. Because if you're one dimensional against Alabama, you're going to have some problems. See the teams that can't run it and or can't throw it. But if you can create some balance, you can create some issues for their defense. So they got to be able to run the ball with more efficiency in the second half. And of course, you got to get off the field here because Alabama can go two for one. Young sliced down. He is sacked by Tennessee. And the injured party is Roman Harrison, who went down low on Young. Very thin at the linebacker spot, Tennessee. Harrison, the junior out of Bainbridge, Georgia is down on just the second sack for the Volunteers. So now third and 18 you figure 
That's pretty much it. What do you think for Alabama? Yeah, you take it to the half. You feel good about where you're at. You had some self-inflicted mistakes yourself with a fumble inside the red area. So both teams going into the half probably feeling pretty good about where they're at. Tennessee can sit there and say, man, we had 50 million pre-snap penalties, yeah. and yet we're within a touchdown of one of the best teams in college football in their house. Alabama is probably saying, man, we left so many plays on the field. We left really bad alignment on defense. We gave them a couple of those. So both teams in one of those unique situations probably going to halftime feeling pretty good about what's in front of them in the final 30 minutes. You've got to believe, considering what Josh Heupel told us during the week, that there was this 12-play stretch against Ole Miss where they hurt themselves with a couple of penalties. He hammered that home this week, and again, the penalty issue has risen up and tonight. That's, and that's frustrating. And it and it's really comes down to poise, leadership, and understanding the circumstances. Right now, their strongest leader is Cade Mays. Cade Mays isn't out there tonight at right tackle. He's not there. So who's the guy that's going to rally the troops say, all right, enough is enough. Let's hang in there, and let's go when the ball is snapped. But they have to get it addressed because you just can't play behind the sticks the way they have throughout most of the first half. Giveaway stops as well off penalties as they have. Third and 18, there's a marker down. A couple of them have flown in. Young across his body and incomplete. There's a four-car pileup behind Young, and that's where the markers got tossed. I don't really understand that play there. Holding. Offense number 79. That penalty is declined. Fourth down. Why? I just would have run it and and see if Tennessee opted to take a timeout. Now you have to send your punt unit onto the field. And bad things happen when the punter's on the field. Think back to Michigan, Michigan State, and the drop snap and the Michigan State. Jalen Watts Jackson taking it back to the house. I mean, that play will ring in my memory forever. So you expect Tennessee come after it a million miles an hour and see if you can't block it and maybe steal some points of your own. Tremendous call by our friend Sean in that game. And this punt is clean. Back to Jones. And he goes down to the deck with it. So six seconds to go. You kneel down, you call it a half. Right? I don't know. We just saw Alabama drop back on third and 18 and try to throw it. If you just heave one up. Tennessee went three and out its last three drives of this half. Again, if you just joined us, the Volunteers led 14 to seven at the end of one. Alabama's got a couple of touchdowns here, but the uh, pride of the Southland in its own little corner of the sky there has got to be rather happy that Tennessee's hanging around on a week when highly ranked teams have had great trouble, mostly on the road, but some at home as well. Well, you want if your Tennessee is a chance. Well, you have one now with 30 minutes to play. And if you can tighten up on the defensive side of the football, you're going to make things very possible and very uncomfortable for Alabama. But a lot of things for both sides to sort out after the first 30. Alabama by 7, 21-14. Trying to win its 15th straight against Tennessee. Downstairs, Katie. Thanks, Jason. Coach Saban. Welcome back to ESPN College Football Primetime, presented by Subway. Alabama and Bryce Young were down 14 to 7 after one quarter. They've got 14 unanswered. And the Crimson Tide up by seven, having won 32 straight against the SEC East and 14 straight against Tennessee. But the balls are hanging around. And the balls have done a really good job so far, taking advantage of some Bama mistakes. But Bama also left some opportunities on the field. You would expect them to come out in the second half and continue to play at a really high level through the air. Just whether or not they can establish a little bit more dominance on the ground. Toby Wilson, the kick for Tennessee to open the second half. 
And Alabama will have it first. Our first half stats brought to you by PlayStation. What stands out? And the biggest one is the Alabama third downs. I mean, there have been several examples in which Tennessee's gotten Alabama behind the sticks or get them in a situation where they might be able to get that defense off the field. And Bryce Young has been sensational on third down. Very accurate, very decisive, and taking advantage of what the defense is doing to them. So considering the last two weeks for Alabama and this first half, what is Alabama right now? The, they are extremely difficult to defend, and they really are. They can run the ball with a lot of efficiency. They can throw the ball with unbelievable efficiency with one of the best quarterbacks in college football. Now I think what they really need to do is don't make mistakes in the red zone because they really played a fantastic first half of football for the most part. Young to Robinson out of the backfield and he goes down. Katie talked to Josh Heupel. I did and his concerns were more on the offensive side. He said the time of possession disparity is clearly an issue. He doesn't feel like his offense is getting first downs on a consistent basis. That are not converting on short yardage situations. He wants to see his team run the ball more efficiently. And then he said, of course, we got to clean it up on the penalties. Josh Heupel sounds a little bit like you talking about third down <laughs> conversions. It's tough when you have a quarterback that's as dialed in as Bryce Young. It's really tough on third down. Robinson. So third down for Alabama. They've got to get to the 36 yard line on this opening drive of the second half. See right there second and long trying to commit to that run game. Two to one time of possession. A big back like Brian Robinson him continuing to pound it downhill will eventually take its toll. So expect Alabama to really commit to the run here in the second half with their big physical running backs. Bryce Young with a word for him after the motion from the outside for Robinson. Alabama seven for nine on third down. Young shimmies out of the pocket, gets around Blakely and turns it outside, throwing across his body. And it will be fourth down. Byron Young with the pressure toward the sideline. And for Tim Banks, the former Penn State defensive coordinator, that's exactly what he needed. Yeah, great start there for Tim Banks in this Tennessee defense. You force a negative play on first and 10. You rally up on second and long to force a third and long. And then you do a great job of covering down on the back end. And then you're smart in your pursuit. There were a couple times in which Bryce Young extended drives with his legs. That time they did a better job containing the quarterback and forcing the incompletion. First three and out tonight for Alabama. Comes at the right time for Tennessee and burn up to punt to Velas Jones Jr. And Jones from the sideline. This is a couple of yards to the 30 yard line. And Tennessee gets it back. And Tennessee took advantage of a couple of key mistakes from Alabama in the defensive secondary. Right here, completely misaligned. They've outside leverage by the nickel. There's nobody in the middle of the defense. That's a touchdown for Tennessee. Same thing here. No one in the middle of the defense. They have outside leverage of the corner. Battle can't make a play as he tries to retreat back to the post safety. And Tennessee strikes up the fight song yet again. They took a, did a great job of using their tempo to take advantage of Alabama mistakes. Now they have to be more methodical by running the football, and they cannot have the pre-snap false starts like they had on so many occasions in the first half. We're talking right around a yard and a half a carry for Tennessee in the ball game so far. Hendon Hooker to run. He got hit initially by Harris, and Anderson doused him. Will Anderson Jr. is so unbelievably active for this team, both verbally and on the field. He's one of my favorite players in college football. Just plays so hard every day. And down goes Hendon Hooker. Fedarian Mathis, the senior. Fifth year senior Mathis with sack number two for Alabama. Third and forever. Hooker goes the short way for Tillman and not a whole lot there. And Christian Harris is feeling his oats standing over him. Nice game so far for the junior out of Baton Rouge. Harris, but Fedarian Mathis stopped the drive. Yeah, great job there by Alabama's defense. Offense goes out, has a three and out. You answer. And their leader, Will Anderson, helping lead the charge alongside the senior, Phil Mathis. Fifth 
punt for Tennessee and Paxton Brooks. Earl has to reach for it and Alabama gets it back. A lot of danger time for highly ranked teams. Alabama's in a tough one against their rival. Here's a look at the National Championship Trophy presented by Dr. Pepper. Uh, Cincinnati on the road had a first half handful with Navy. Number two, Cincinnati. We saw Oklahoma on a wild play from Caleb Williams just barely escaped Lawrence, Kansas. It has been a crazy day in college football. Survive and advance type of day. That's for sure. It has been wild. It's one of those days where you just see how difficult it is to go undefeated in college football this year and a year as Mechie has the catch on first down. Alabama up by seven. Every recruiting class has at least one ring under Nick Saban. <laughs> how about that? You think that helps recruiting? I think that's probably pretty good. That's right. Might lead with that uh, when you think about going into the living room, but it's amazing what he's built. I think the most amazing thing is the consistency. There's just almost no drop off on an annual basis, regardless of the turnover that you have from a personnel standpoint. I like the way he handles his former players <laughs> on Zoom calls. <laughs> Second down for Young to the fringe, an incomplete short of Jamison Williams, third down. Yeah, Coach Save is not afraid to bust some chops, that's for sure, but. If you're a former player, you got to give it back to him. That's for sure. <laughs> That's right. The harder you come back at him, the more he likes it. You're allowed to do that, right? I don't know if I'm allowed, but I've, I've tried. <laughs> That's for sure. But big third down here for Tennessee's defense. Of course, got off the field on the first third down of the second half. Another opportunity here to potentially get that ball back to their offense. Alabama seven for ten on third down. Young turns the corner and he's not going to get the first down or come even close to it. Banks cut off the edge and it's fourth down so the defenses have been stout in the first four minutes of this third quarter. Right now Bryce Young is just I don't think he's seeing the field real confidently and if you look right here. Watch Mechie. He's going to go up here and settle up right over the middle of the field. You got zone coverage. You got to throw it. Hit it right on his left shoulder. Now it might not get the first down. Maybe he does. Maybe he doesn't. Maybe he breaks a tackle. Who knows? But you got to anticipate that throw in the zone. And Bryce Young is holding it just a little longer than he did in the first half. What do you think Tennessee has done to cause that? Oh, they get there. It is blocked by Tennessee. And the ball came loose. So the Volunteers are going to take over on a block punt early third quarter. It looks like what a great job here by Deshaun Rucker for Tennessee. He comes off the right side, number 28, and gets a hand on it. And it's just poorly protected by Alabama's punt protection. That second line has to do a better job. You can't allow free rusher. And now Tennessee is knocking on the door. First down, Hendon Hooker. Quick throw and incomplete. He wanted the tight end, Jacob Warren, who's been very quiet tonight at second down. Big opportunity here for Alabama's defense. Sudden change. They did a great job after the fumble by Jamison Williams earlier. What can they do now here in another sudden change opportunity? Big run for Tyon Evans. That doubles as a big run for Tennessee tonight. I don't think here third down. They move the pocket with Hendon Hooker. Get him outside. He's a capable runner. Not a great runner, but a capable runner. And you got the whole field to your right. See if you can get him moving on the right. Roll him out. Potentially give him a run pass option. There it is. Hooker on the move to his right. Hooker throws it, and that's incomplete. He was in front of the line of scrimmage, I believe, as he threw that ball. There is a marker down. It's got to be the whole body in front of the line of scrimmage. And the line judge threw it, and it did appear as though he might have crossed, but like you said, the entire body has to be beyond the line of scrimmage. 
We'll take a look at it here in just a second. This would certainly affect any thought of going for it for Josh Heupel on fourth down. Yeah, there it is. Now, if he had just gone down or dived forward, that's about a fourth and one and a half or fourth and two. See where he is at the 10. Illegal four pass, offense, number five. The pass was beyond the line of scrimmage when he released the ball. This is a five yard penalty to enforce him, he's a foul, and includes a loss to down, fourth down. And two weeks in a row now. Last week, Joe Milton, this week, Hendon Hooker losing track of where the line of scrimmage is. It's easy to do when you're on the move. You just kind of lose track because you're looking and you're trying to get a defender to commit and come up to you so you can dump it over his head. That time Alabama did a great job of staying disciplined, staying in coverage, and he should have. He should have, I think, tried to split the defense and pick it up with his legs. Could have gone for it now. It's Chase McGrath for a field goal to make it a four-point game from 33. McGrath knocks it down for Tennessee. We'll see how important that play was in this ball game. It's Alabama by four, under 10 to go in the third. When Nico says after this game, he means it very specifically. When we hit zeros on the clock, Nico Ali Walsh will be walking into the ring at the very moment we are done here in Tuscaloosa. But Alabama is getting more rounds in this thing than they may have wanted as Tennessee is within four in the third quarter. Another volcanic scene in Tuscaloosa. Great crowd. Wilson on the approach for Tennessee. Bolden, Alabama from the 25. Saturday night football next week is a huge one in the Big Ten and a bounce back opportunity for the Nittany Lions who lost in all of nine overtimes today. Ohio State currently blowing out Indiana, number five in the country. And the Buckeyes may have a chance to move up in the standings in the rankings here brought to you by Chick-fil-A, our college football rankings. A wild day. What does Alabama, if they take a loss, what does that do to this whole thing? Well, they're they're in serious trouble with the jet with the playoff. The biggest, I think, conversation piece right now is Ohio State's resurgence and the fact that Oregon still with one loss, albeit a bad one to Stanford, with the head to head win in Columbus. It's going to get very interesting when those rankings are released. And Oregon to win today at UCLA and a whistle and a Do flag. Game. Offense. Five yard penalty. Still first down. I was going to ask you how Nick Saban feels about a delay a game out of a kickoff, but we know now. Yeah, it's not one that is real fun to hear, that's for sure. But trying to energize this offense a little bit, they've been a little stagnant so far. Saban saying at halftime they wanted to come out and really start pounding it in the run game. Well, it's hard to do that when you're behind the sticks at first and 15. Young makes a decision now into traffic, and it's second down. So read between the lines. That level of frustration for Nick Saban we just saw. What does that mean in his mind? You played for him. Well, he's as frustrated with the offensive performance as he is probably with the play calling. That time, trying to take a shot on first and 15 when the big point of emphasis coming out of halftime is trying to control the line of scrimmage with a two to one time of possession advantage. Robinson, there was no second crease. Blakely to stop. It's third down and long for Alabama, who's 0 for 2 on third down in the second half. Tennessee so far has done a very good job here at the line of scrimmage, pushing and reestablishing the line of scrimmage, forcing Alabama to really not, I mean, to be there kind of in a position in which the line of scrimmage has been reestablished in Alabama's backfield. But of course, yet another critical third down for the Volunteers' defense. Let's see if they drop back and play coverage yet again. 
Line to gain is the 35. Young, decisive throw right down the middle for Mechie in a first down. And he takes advantage of this linebacker. He's mugged up here, and as a result, he's responsible for the for the over the top. So a good job there of Bryce Young seeing that linebacker walked up into the line of scrimmage and throwing it over his head quickly and decisively. Picked outside, down the middle, and incomplete off Billingsley's hands, and that could have gone a long way. Wow. I mean, wide open, and a good throw there. It looks like Billingsley, I don't know if he thought a safety was coming or what. Throw a little bit out there, but that's one your tight end, an all-American tight end with that type of potential has to have. But a good reaction from the young quarterback, not allowing the negative result of the play to face him. Very reserved young man, Bryce Young. But for Alabama, who lives off yards after the catch, a couple of big drops in space and nearly a delay of game here. And this run for Williams goes absolutely nowhere because Beasley cut him down. Right now, there's just not much rhythm that we've seen from Alabama. First half, very rhythmic, making great decisions. Ball out of Bryce Young's hand rather quickly. When it's not, he bought time and used his legs. But right now, man, just not playing with the same level of urgency. You've got to wonder if maybe the next series they get into a no huddle operation to see if you can energize the side of the football. Started to show tempo early in this drive after the big hit to Mechie. Bogged down to third and seven. Here comes pressure. Young climbing the pocket and Bryce Young with a major run for a first down and a gain of 15. How about the move by Bryce Young? I mean, escaping north and south, making a guy miss. Woo. Great run by the quarterback. Looked like Beasley that got juked. First down, Alabama. That'll get some energy into the offense. Williams stopped after a couple of yards. Now look, Alabama bounced back well last week. At Mississippi State, a couple of big hits in the past game, 250 yards after the catch for Bill O'Brien, but it's not been the same type of fluidity as you're talking about this week. No, it hasn't. It's a, you got to give credit also to Tennessee's defense. They've done a really good job of mixing it up, changing the looks, and doing a pretty good job in coverage as well. But you got to think Alabama at some point, they're going to just start to impose their will and just hand those big running backs downhill. Young to throw, he snaps it off to the sideline, and too much for Mechie. Slaughter on the coverage, third down Alabama. You're up 21-17, and that's your look. That's the <laughs> expectation in Tuscaloosa in one face. You're also taught never to look at the scoreboards. <laughs> play every play as though it has a life of its own. Obviously, another opportunity here for Tennessee. A time they got a little bit too carried away with their disguise. Let's see if they just drop out and just try to keep it in front of them at the sticks this time. Here comes pressure at the linebacker spot, and they force the rush throw for Bryce Young. Byron Young ran right into him. And for Bryce Young, who was great against the Blitz last week, that's an incompletion. And you're going to see the offensive line just all the way work to the right, which means Byron Young's coming off the left. And he is unblocked. So Bryce Young has to try to beat the unblocked defender with the throw. And when he's standing right there at the line of scrimmage, it's so difficult to do, trying to hit the running back out of the backfield. Good design there by Tim Banks to get that offensive line to slide. Reichard from 45. And that is good. It nestles home. 24-17, a nail-biter for Alabama at home. Matt Berry slides it in there, nicely done. Some great games late, this is one of them.
Alabama by seven, 24-17, each team with a field goal in the third. And Tennessee has it after the Bama field goal led by Bryce Young, Katie. Well, after that field goal, guys, Bryce Young immediately got on the headset on the sidelines to talk with offensive coordinator Bill O'Brien. The two have an open line of communication. Young says he feels comfortable voicing his opinions, what plays he likes, what concerns he has. And I asked Bill O'Brien if that's the norm for him and the QBs he works with. And he said, no, not every quarterback of the 50 or so he's coached has earned his trust in that way. He said there's actually very few that have. So Brian says it speaks to Young's consistent preparation, his knowledge of the game, and his unwavering commitment to this offense. Let's see if they can work out the kinks on that heads up. See some NFL in that as well. The trust of a quarterback, Hendon Hooker, is nailed by Anderson second down. What do you make of that with O'Brien and Young? Yeah, it's great to have an open line of communication. I mean, you have to be the guy that is essentially, you're, you're the puppet. Bill O'Brien's the puppet master. For them to be in unison is really remarkable. It's a real testament to the relationship they've been able to cultivate this year. Hooker gets out of the pocket and he spins through a would-be tackle. Anderson wants the ball. Hooker's got the leg drive across the 35-yard line. Tennessee is amped and that young man, but we didn't know if he was going to play as of this morning, just ends up with 13 and a first down. Great effort there by Hooker, keeping his legs driving and picking up the first down. To throw this time on a comeback and that is caught by Tillman, second down. And that's one thing he's going to have to continue to do is use his legs to keep this defense honest. His pass rush is solid. Of course, Will Anderson's one of the best in college football, if not the best edge presence in college football, him and Kayvon Thibodeau. Got to keep him honest with his pass rush. Toa Toa wanted the football from his former team there, the linebacker for Alabama, the transfer from Tennessee. And now for Golis, what's your call? They go fast. Hendon Hooker trying to move the legs, and this is going to be about a yard and a half short of the first down. Would you have the guts to go for it here? I think if you make that call on third down, you're already thinking in that regard. Trying to catch him off balance, but it looks like the running back, Tyon Evans, is coming into the game, and the offense is staying on the field. I like the call. The analytics would tell you to... At this point, this part of the field, roll the dice. You saw Ole Miss do it a couple weeks ago here in Bryant Denny. It didn't work out for him. But I like the call knowing you're the underdog and you've got to throw your biggest and best punch every opportunity you have. Now here's the thing. They're going to use a timeout, it looks like. Let's see if they do or they take the delay of game. There is a marker down, so they are going to take the delay of game. Delay of game, offense, five yard penalty, still four down. I'm with you. If you're going to win this game, you're going to have to make a play like that. At, at what point is Alabama going to take the top off because of how explosive that offense can be? I would have at least kept the offense on the field, see if I couldn't get Alabama to jump off sides, maybe get a free play, maybe you get a free first down, and then take the delay of game. But how they handled it was a little unique there. Punt number six for Tennessee and Brooks and a rough snap to handle. Spinning back to Bolden at the 20 yard line. So we're talking about the relationship with Bill O'Brien and Bryce Young. Here's how close Nick Saban got to Bryce Young on the sideline. It's really cool. And that's a special relationship. Now he's obviously spends more of his time with the defense. But he is the steadying force of the program. When you're feeling a little bit down, he's going to build you up. If you're feeling a little too high and mighty, he's going to bring you back down. He tries to make sure that you're as consistent as possible. Right now, this offense searching a little bit, trying to find themselves, trying to find a rhythm, trying to invigorate some confidence in this Bama offense here in the second half. Empty off the motion. Mechie with the catch and run. And he ends up getting four for Alabama. He's been the most important wide receiver here tonight, John Mechie, who was born in Taiwan, moved to Ghana, and then spent his formative years in Canada before coming over to the U.S. Robinson switching back 
And it's going to be third down and about two for the tie. And here's a little bit of that tempo from Alabama. Not crazy hyperspeed, not what you would expect from Tennessee, but a little bit more no huddle, a little bit more urgency, seeing if you can't get those guys kind of worked into a position in which they're a little bit more comfortable. But here on a critical down and distance, third and two, you slow it down just a hair. But I would expect a handoff yet again to your big, powerful running back. You saw Robinson's numbers a moment ago. They need two on third down. And a whistle and a marker. False start, offense number 70. Five yard penalty, still third down. It's Cohen, the guard. It's got to be frustrating for Nick Saban. This, you have a third and manageable, really the first time, it feels like, in the second half. And now you make it a little bit more unmanageable. With the way this offense goes, though, still so hard to get off the field, regardless of how many yards there are to gain. Just see what Tennessee does here defensively, though. They bring the pressure. I wouldn't. I would continue to drop back and see if that pass rush can get home and make Bryce Young a little uncomfortable. They slide on the line. They only bring three. And they nearly got there. This over the middle is to Jamison Williams. Boy, Byron Young, if he had just a little bit more time, was going to get a hit on Young. Alabama's run this play three or four times now with a mesh and that guy right behind it. Tennessee's got to find an answer because that's a, that's a play and a passing concept that is really difficult to defend. Big hit on Robinson. How do you defend that route? What can Tennessee do? They have to squeeze that over the ball wide receiver. It's been Mechie. It's been Jamison Williams like it was right there. But if you're in man coverage, it's not going to that guy. It's going to the mesh routes where you're going to get a little bit of a rub, a natural pick, and then you find the guy that gets rubbed. And then zone, you got to make sure you can squeeze it on the inside. Bryce Young snaps it off. Wide open, Trayshawn Holden. And if he could have kept his feet, he might have been running to the state line. And a great job here by Bryce Young. Looking left, not liking it, buying a little bit of time, and then they drop coverage. And sure enough, Holden's in behind the defense. Trayshawn Holden, who had his first career catch with Alabama last year against Tennessee in the blowout win, has a huge get for Bama. And now we do have a couple of injured Tennessee volunteers. That's Bumpfus, the senior defensive lineman, and then Byron Young as well. Hate to see that, of course, and Tennessee so razor thin, like we've talked about on several different occasions. Just not a lot of depth, and you start to look at the time of possession and the amount of snaps that this Tennessee team has already faced. Bama now snapped the ball offensively 70 times to Tennessee's 36. And when you're a team that doesn't do as many substitutions as others because you just don't have that kind of depth, this is the time and place in the game in which it starts to get very difficult very soon on some of those defenders in the trenches. All right, so the Tennessee players are getting up here. The crowd's booing. Look, we thought Tennessee was going to have the spirit to do this. We didn't know if they'd have the bodies to yeah. do it. What do they have to do to put this thing over the top against Alabama? Well, they have to buckle down here, obviously, back against the wall. They just slowed the momentum a second to go, but they have to get off the field on third down. So far, Alabama's done a really good job of third down. And then for the first time, Tennessee defensively had a bust in coverage. They've been really good and have had some coverage sacks and have forced Bryce Young to escape the pocket more often than he has at really any point this season. But right there, you have Holden that gets behind the defense because a frontline defender jumps up into the route. So you've got to stay disciplined, especially this part of the field. Roydell Williams down to the 21 for Alabama. First down for the Crimson Tide. Talk about that run game and this big physical offensive line. It's going to be really difficult for Tennessee to hold up at this part of the drive. Mechie. Catch and run to the sideline and out of bounds in the arms of Taylor. Alabama's cooking now with about a minute to go in the third. 
This is the ninth play of this drive for Alabama. You see these Tennessee defenders with hands on the hips. Williams again, and he goes down spinning to the nine yard line. Look, Roydell Williams is a competitive bowler, but those last two runs, he's looked like the bowling ball. Yeah, he, he is big and physical, and a guy that you, know, you just didn't know exactly what his role was going to be within the offense. You didn't know what the pecking order was to be. You thought Brian Robinson would probably be the first guy, but then it was Jace McClellan. Well, Roydell Williams and Jace McClellan's absence because of the injury has really stepped up and carved out a nice role within this offense. Robinson back in and another whistle. Alabama had only one Both first half penalty. Offense number 81. Five yard penalty. Still second down. If you're a lip reader and your children are lip readers, <laughs> you might want to unteach them that skill. Yet again, Alabama. So many things for Nick Saban to clean up, both offensively and defensively throughout the course of this game. High frustration for Alabama, even though they're up seven and they will snap it. Young down the middle on the catch and run inside the 10 yard line. And that is Trayshawn Holden off the final play of this third quarter. Tennessee now some frustration on the field, some booing happening. Bumpfus is down again for Tennessee, and the crowd's reacting to that. Close ball game, end of three. Monday Night Football, Peyton and Eli, ESPN 2, 8 Eastern Time. St. Seahawks this week. Eli got his jersey retired today, by the way. Peyton's alma mater backed up defensively. Third down, Alabama. Bryce Young to throw. Here comes pressure from Young. Bryce Young off the pump fake. He got in. The ball came out, but he crossed the plane. Touchdown. The call is touchdown. We will see on replay whether or not that stands. Let's take a look. Does the ball cross the plane? Oh my goodness, it's so close. Of course, with the call on the field, with the call on the field being touchdown, the replay has to be indisputable video evidence beyond all doubt to overturn. It's very, very close. Where is the nose of the football when he begins to lose control? Here it is. Now he looked like he regained control for a moment after McCullough punched it. Yeah, moves a hair right there. It is oh. so close. You got to believe they're going to stop this here. Yeah, you got to look. They, every scoring play is reviewed, of course. Every play is looked at, and it is really close. Yeah, guys, as Bryce Young was coming off the field, Nick Saban said, look, you don't have to put the ball out. You got the first down. So clearly a learning moment for the young quarterback as well. Question is, on the ensuing play, was there a clear recovery as well? And I think this is... It's tough to tell right there. Where's the ball start to jar free? Now again, if the ruling was, let's see. The ruling on the field is a touchdown. The previous play is under further review. I think it's a good job by the officials of handling this, allowing the command center to take a look at this and. And it's so close. And the end right down the line is the best look. 
Now if, if Bryce Young recovered that football that's a piece of this as well. If he was right back on top of it. And where's the clear recovery who has it. And they didn't call anything. On the field as far as a recovery is concerned. Let's take a look at it here. Well Jason that's the exact argument Nick Saban's making with the officials on the sidelines he said even if we did fumble it we're the ones that recovered it in the end zone so what are we talking about here. That's what it looked like to me Katie. I think this call is going to stand. Review, the ruling of the touchdown is confirmed. Now a hundred thousand people or so were yelling and I believe our referee said he recovered the fumble in the end zone for the touchdown and that's why it was confirmed. Yeah and it was a great gutsy effort there from Bryce Young of course excellent excellent play but you got to be careful down around the goal line that's exactly what Nick Saban reminded his quarterback. Dangerous spot there too with the quarterback going in head first. Now Josh Heupel says I want my timeout back and I believe if I'm reading lips properly he said I didn't call timeout. They they believe they gave them. I mean he believe he has three timeouts still. If I'm not mistaken. By his reaction, I'm not sure. Ooh. If every touchdown is reviewed and initiated from the replay review, and he should have his timeout back, but maybe they didn't initiate it. He wanted them to. And again, you could make the argument that there was no reason to initiate it, but if he didn't have the communication that the recovery was Alabama's, then you could say that's on the officials for not clearly communicating that to him as well, because then he wouldn't have used the timeout, right? Correct. Because if the result, regardless of whether it's a fumble or not, doesn't change, then there would be absolutely no reason to challenge it, obviously. Obviously, a, a unique circumstance there on the touchdown. As we take one more look at it, gutsy play from the quarterback. He had the first down, too, by the way. A good job of, of diving forward and crossing that plane. As you see him and his teammates upon the call from the official, loving what they hear, and the quarterback, like he always is, barely cracks a smile. The same guy after a touchdown or an interception. It's amazing just how unwaveringly consistent he is. 42 yards on the ground. You've got to believe he saw the tape of Matt Corral against Tennessee last week and said there are more opportunities for me to run. Matt Barry in the studio always watching tape. Every day. Joe Tess. Throwing hands. First down Tennessee in a humongous drive for the Volunteers. That is Jalen Hyatt who's a deep threat for them. That's his first target of the ball game. Yeah, it's surprising that he's been so quiet. Obviously such a great playmaker with the ball in his hands. And in Hooker over the top. Tillman down the sideline. Tennessee comes right back. He just roasted Job down the sideline. And how about the throw? Job's not even really looking. They snap the ball so quickly. Job's looking for a call. He gets caught. Next thing you know, the wide receiver's beyond him, and the throw is on the money. What a response from the Tennessee Volunteers. But that's the third time now that Alabama's defense has poorly communicated, and as a result, leads to points for the Volunteers. That is the rhythm and the tempo that Nick Saban was talking about and Tennessee bites them with it. The deep ball hasn't been there all year but it was this time. 70 yards Hendon Hooker to Cedric Tillman. We got a game in Tuscaloosa. Tennessee hasn't beaten Alabama since 06.
They're close. We'll find out together. 70-yard touchdown for Cedric Tillman in Tennessee. 31-24 Alabama. As football spans generation, Cedric Tillman's dad had a catch in the very first Jacksonville Jaguars game in the early 90s when they were still playing this game in Birmingham at Legion Field. Slade Bolden on the return for Bama, and he is to the 25-yard line. This season, along with their contributions to university's general scholarship funds for every field goal and extra point made, Allstate will also be donating to the American Red Cross to help with disaster relief efforts. Thank you, Allstate. Alabama gets it back, a 31-24 in this big rivalry game. We asked Nick Saban the most important rivalry he had as a kid. And he talked about this rivalry that he had with another high school in West Virginia. And he said, if we lost that game, we weren't allowed in the local restaurant arcade. <laughs> if we won the game, they gave us a free roll of nickels to play pinball. That's big stakes. This is even more so Tennessee, Alabama. He also noted that he never lost one of those. That's he was right. always able to play pinball. <laughs> pinball for free as a kid. You got to love that. He's not going to love this. Right to the expiration of the play clock. First charge time out of the half, Alabama. He's got to be frustrated. I mean, right now, the Alabama offense just had a great drive. I mean, they went right down the field, scored a touchdown, great play by his quarterback. But the urgency, for whatever reason, just isn't there. I mean, it's just you used to watching this offense. They're so buttoned up. They don't make mistakes. There's urgency, both running it and throwing it. For whatever reason, it's not there. So he's got to light a fire at some point, as you see him in the huddle, letting his offense hear about it. What do you think the why is on the offense being out of sync? Tennessee's doing a good job, first and foremost. Yep. I mean, they're holding up, and it's not easy to hold up against this attack. They've also been patient, Tennessee has, by just trying to keep the ball in front of them. Now, what Tennessee hasn't done is get off the field on a very consistent basis on third down. First down here out of the timeout, it's Robinson. And Tennessee has been really good at forcing him to at least the second lane in his runs tonight. It's second down and long. And I feel like the run game for Alabama so far, there hasn't been enough quick hitters. It's been kind of slow developing run plays. Now that, that gives credit to Tennessee as well. They've done a great job at the line of scrimmage. I'm surprised they're not hitting it more downhill or trying to get off tackle. Robinson in space. He is hit by Slaughter. Great stand up job by Slaughter in Tennessee. It's a loss of five. What a great play by Slaughter. I mean, you have a big running back that hasn't been tackled in the open field all night, and you make a play at the line of scrimmage. Tim Banks, the defensive coordinator, has got to be really fired up about the play of his safety there. Robinson leads the SEC in broken tackles. And there he loses five, third and 15. Tennessee has got to get off the field. Young wants a deep ball. He takes a shot down the middle. Wide open, Jamison Williams. Inside the 15. And how about Jamison Williams? I mean, the speedster working against the linebacker, Aaron Beasley. And of course, he's going to win that race. There's no safety help over the top. And how about the throw from the quarterback, Bryce Young. So decisive on the throw. Now Robinson using the hesitation to slam into the end zone. That's the reaction you get from the opponents when you lead the SEC in broken tackles. Just an unbelievably beautiful two-play sequence from one of the best offenses in college football. The 
Reichert's extra point is good. Back to third and long. Bryce Young, one of the Heisman favorites, throws an absolute dime to the speedster, Jamison Williams. And then he sets it up for the big fella. The one-two punch. Bryce Young and Brian Robinson. He finds Pater to make it a two-touchdown game for the tie. ESPN College Football Primetime is presented by the Eat Fresh Refresh at Subway and in part by Ford, built for America. Homecoming in Tuscaloosa, Alabama, celebrating with a 14-point lead as we welcome you back to ESPN College Football Primetime presented by Subway. We were talking during the break. Realize how much we all missed this last oh, year. Goodness. It's just so good to have the fans back and the pageantry and the traditions. I just love college football. I love ball. You do. Love we ball. All love ball. Big on ball. Downstairs, Katie, who also loves ball. I do, guys. I asked Jamison Williams, what's your greatest strength this week? And he said, obviously, I've got speed, but I think it's my mentality after the catch. And he's a force once he has the ball in his hands, breaking tackles, beating guys downfield. Nick Saban says Williams has been fantastic outside of the occasional drop. He says he's created a lot of value for himself because of the way he's played this season. And apparently, his GPS mileage throughout a week of practice is off the charts. Bill O'Brien says he's never seen anything like it. And that's saying something considering the guys Bill O'Brien's been around. Yeah, what a great addition to this offense with the vertical speed. Now Tennessee and Will Anderson stymies that first play for Alabama the Terminator. Second and nine, Hendon Hooker down the middle for Tillman. That's a first down for Tennessee and a huge drive for the balls. And so impressed with Hendon Hooker's accuracy tonight. I mean, he has been very accurate, very decisive in some really tight windows against Alabama's defense. Tillman again, Hendon Hooker's dad, Allen, is a North Carolina A&T Hall of Famer. He was a MEAC champion quarterback. There is quarterbacking in his blood, Hendon Hooker, the transfer from Blacksburg. Short set again, and this is stopped quickly by Jordan Battle. Jalen Hyatt does get the first down. Got to be impressed with how quickly Hendon Hooker is getting the ball out of his hands. With the offensive line troubles they've had, he almost has to. Anderson's coming again. Forrest Hooker out of the pocket, and Hendon Hooker with a long step, and he got wrangled by Harris. Again, for a guy who we didn't know if he was going to play as of this morning, this is a gutsy effort from Hendon Hooker. He has played his tail off against the defense who loves to get after the passer. Down the sideline and incomplete. The pressure collapsed the pocket quickly. Anderson was in again with Turner, Dallas Turner, the freshman, and it's third down for Tennessee. Look, they haven't run for nearly anything at all. Almost entirely one dimensional. It's been mostly because of big plays that Tennessee's been able to create. Will be interesting to see this play call here for the Tennessee offense. Because this part of the field, you could also go for it on fourth down. Might have two downs to get it. If you don't pick it up here on third and four. See if they give him the option to run. You see Anderson, look at his chops. Hooker throws it right to Alabama. Picked off by Armour Davis down the sideline. Oh, miscommunication. And Alabama pays it off. And just a miscommunication. Hendon Hooker's looking to his left. He's working an option route. The receiver can go right, he can go left, or he can sit it down. He's thinking he's going to sit it down. He breaks inside. And next thing you know, you have Alabama's corner, Jalen Armour Davis, right there waiting for it. Just not on the same page with Javante Payton. And just a brutal, brutal air there for the Tennessee offense. A crushing mistake. 
and a 47 yard return for Armour Davis. Young staggers out of the pocket. We see the agility to keep his feet with Butler charging at him and it's second down. Alabama's defense forces the turnover, trying to put this game away in the fourth quarter. 86 the last 93 games. You put that alongside 34 straight with at least 30 points, and there's a reason they're 57 and 2 in their last 59 home games. And now turnover margin, the biggest indicator of success more often than not. Bryce Young looks off Robinson, a lot of contact, and there's the marker, McCullough on Holden, and interference coming. That's interference, defense number 22. 15-yard penalty with an automatic first down. And right here, as you see, McCullough Ball's thrown inside. Holden's trying to get to it. McCullough doesn't play the ball. That's an easy call for the official and a good pass interference drawn there by a guy that hasn't had many opportunities in Trayshawn Holden. Greg, that's the 12th penalty on Tennessee for 99 yards. Yeah, just a lot of mistakes from the Volunteers tonight. Really come back to bite him. Robinson saw the first man, made it miss. And he is rapping on the door, not so gently at second and goal. I can't imagine Alabama does anything other than just hand it off here. I mean, with all the conversation the last few weeks about throwing it in this part of the field, they bring in the fullback, Robbie Oots. We expect just power football from Alabama. Give old Robbie a touch. <laughs> Give the fullback a bone. I'm always good for that. Robinson is dead. He is hugged and he is stopped. Robinson goes down. It's third and goal, and he lost about a yard. Tell you what, man. Say what you want about Tennessee's depth and where this program's at. But for them right there, back against the wall, they will not give up. Just so much respect that they've gained here in the last few weeks right here man just leaving it all on the field against one of the best teams in college football third and goal Alabama Robinson wants a third he is in Great job by the right side of that offensive line and Kendall Randolph, the big body tight end, who's right there at the point. He gets low, and that's exactly who Brian Robinson surges over the top of. A great job of holding up there by Tennessee there on the interior, but the big 300-pound tight end, Kendall Randolph, was the guy that was able to lead Brian Robinson into the end zone. And a whistle before the extra point. Robinson out of Hillcrest High School here locally. There's no foul for delayed game. We will have the try. I like he went to the hat. He paused for a second, went to the hat to stabilize himself. And then got the rest out. <laughs> Nicely done. Brian Robinson is now the Hillcrest High School Patriot, threatening to become the most famous Hillcrest High School alum. Battling with White Sox shortstop Tim Anderson, 2019 American League batting champ. It's a close race right now. Sorry, Tim. <laughs> Under nine to go, Alabama by 21. You didn't, but you will. 10 a.m. Eastern time on ESPN. An outstanding atmosphere in Tuscaloosa once again. Robinson, three touchdowns on the ground for Bama. The lead is 21 for the Crimson Tide. Let's take a look at tonight's fighting spirit moment brought to you 
by Modelo. Nick Saban, frustrated with his quarterback. Got to see the shot clock, man. You can't continue to take the lay of games. Well, did he respond by throwing a perfect pass to Jamison Williams over the top? And then Brian Robinson does the dirty work. There he gets the carry. Turn it in to the next series. And Jalen Armour Davis takes advantage of the miscommunication between Hendon Hooker and his wide receiver. Bama pays it off a few plays later. Just a very good sequence there for the Crimson Tide, both offensively and defensively. Jabari Small drops it. That was close to a backward pass. It is forward and incomplete. Nick Saban, when he was yelling there, did not look like he had the serenity of when he sits in his living room and watches the Weather Channel every morning, which he told us he does <laughs> routinely to check up on all of his coaching friends, see what the weather's like. And I never knew that until this week, believe it or not. Every morning, coffee, Weather Channel. And Little Debbie Cookies. And yeah, that's right. Hendon Hooker climbing the pocket. Uncorks a deep ball into double coverage and some hand fighting, but incomplete for Javante Payton. And a third down, really, for the game here for Tennessee to stay alive. And got to have a situation, obviously. I don't know if at this point of the field you can justify going for it on fourth down, but that's definitely a thought that would probably cross Josh Heifel's mind if they're unsuccessful here on third and ten. Tennessee two for 11 on third down. Quick hitter, Bayless Jones Jr., and he doesn't have nearly the space. A lot of gridlock there. Armour Davis got the first hit in after his pick on the last possession, and it's fourth down Tennessee. It looks like Heupel, the punt team, is over there waiting to go out on the field, but it looks like You might as well, right? Might as well. I think you almost uh, yeah. have to. I mean, if you punt it, you're essentially conceding that the game is over. I'm good with the decision. Yeah, what does it matter if you lose by 21 or 28? Fourth down. Anderson. And down he goes. Harris got the hit, but Will Anderson changed the decision making of Hendon Hooker coming around the corner. It's been so impressive to watch Will Anderson the last few weeks. I mean, he has been unstoppable. You ask anyone in that building where Alabama practices every day, say, who's the hardest worker? They say Will Anderson. Who's the best player? Might be a 50-50 tie, Will Anderson and Bryce Young, but Will Anderson making his presence felt as Bama's knocking on the door. Shirts are optional. The crowd tonight in Tuscaloosa. Victory cigars are no longer optional. A major part of this rivalry and too much so for Tennessee fans in recent years. But uh, the cigars are out with Alabama up by 21. As we go to the studio and Matt Berry, no smoking, please. Yeah, I can't smoke here on campus. At least I don't think you can. Notre Dame, USC. ND was in control. Trojans fight back, but the Irish have the ball in Trojans territory looking to put this thing away late. Matt, thank you very much. Just an amazing atmosphere again tonight in Tuscaloosa. Alabama by 21. Where does this rank in terms of crowds that you've been around? Like if somebody was here for the first time, what would you say if one to 10 this crowd is tonight? <laughs> it's pretty good, man. They have been into it. They've had an impact on the game with some of the pre-snap penalties the Tennessee's suffered it's it's really been an impressive and the game day atmosphere here has changed drastically of course with the LED lights and and just the energy in the building it's changed an awful lot but it is a lot of people think it's the Mecca of college football and understandably so I mean it's just it's a special place that should be on everyone's bucket list if you're a diehard college football fan or if you just love sports. Robinson again, and he was bottled up. Katie, what's it like down on the field there? Yeah, it's been awesome, and I had a chance, guys, to go to Alabama's practice on Thursday, and when I walked in, they were blaring crowd noise, and I remember thinking, gosh, you know, when are they going to turn it off? This is so loud, but Nick Saban runs it from start to finish, and, and 
I now understand why, because it's been so incredibly loud, especially on third down situations. I've been very impressed by this fan base. I, I love the light show in between quarters. Greg, I don't know if they did that when you were here. I'm not sure if flip phones had <laughs> lights on it or we not. Didn't have, we didn't have, oh, well, that's I'm tough. Kidding. That's tough. Uh, we didn't have LEDs, I don't think, at that point. <laughs> Zing. I'm not even sure we had high-definition television at that point either. That is, that's a top flight burn from Katie downstairs. <laughs> Katie, are you smelling the cigar smoke down there? Look at all of it. I am, and it's starting to get a little hazy. My dad's a cigar uh, guy, so uh, this is bringing back a lot of memories from my childhood. It's pretty awesome. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I do think that Nick Saban probably looking around saying, why are you guys smoking some good games that overs, not zeros? I bet he's losing it a little bit. Game's not over. Does Put the cigar away. Does he know you do that impersonation? Or did I'll you do a very good one. Reveal that to him right there. Over the middle, Mechie. Now, maybe he's okay with it. Touchdown, Alabama. Through the haze of the smoke, John Mechie, a 19 yard touchdown. And that right there is the result of a team on defense that has played about a million plays today. That was the 88th offensive snap for Alabama. And you can see the fatigue setting in for Tennessee. Great job by Mechie on the shallow cross. Nice accurate throw from Bryce Young. And Bama finds the end zone yet again. Bryce Young told us when his receivers are catching and running, typically he's just there smiling in the backfield and enjoying it. Here's his reaction. A little English. Not much smile, though. I, you, he's just the same guy every time. It's crazy. You could take a reaction after an interception, a, an opposing team's touchdown. Doesn't matter, as you see his parents who moved from California to the Birmingham area. Got to be so proud of that young man and, and just visiting with him. I think what's most impressive is just how much of a pro yeah. he already is. I mean, Bill O'Brien comes from the NFL. You know, this guy's a pro. I mean, this guy knows how to prepare. He knows how to read defense. He knows how to watch tape. It's just been a real joy to watch him here these first two months of the season. In our meeting, I asked Bryce Young what a good Bryce Young impression would be. <laughs> and he doesn't have any distinct things that he does on the football field with his face. He's so stoic. He said, I guess you just have to have like a higher pitched voice. We got all these guys <laughs> with low voices on the team. I'm in the upper register. But man, is he impressive? I mean, you can tell he grew up watching guys like Aaron Rodgers and he's got NFL in his veins. He does. And I've just been. You knew he was going to be talented. There's no, there's no surprise there. I mean, you come in with that type of pedigree. Alabama has done a great job recruiting every position, and the quarterback's no different. I mean, he has remarkable skill set. But what you can't teach is his maturity, how he handles and approaches the game, how he respects the game, how he respects the opponent. I mean, that is a difficult thing to measure, and my goodness, does he have it. His dad, Craig, was a guy who told him at a very young age, we talked about it a little bit, he was so much more athletic than some of the young kids. He said, Bryce, you can't always just run the ball because it's always going to be there. You have to learn how to be a passer. And so now it's so interesting. He shows up at Alabama and people are saying, well, you got to run, run the run ball it. more. <laughs> he, he, he takes coaching, another thing he does very well yeah. from his dad, of course. I mean, he's just a joy to watch, and he's a joy to cover. I mean, there's a lot of guys that you come across in this industry, and you get to meet a lot of really cool people, and you know, he has been a real treat here in the first two months of the season. He's been better than I thought he'd be great. I, he's better than I thought he'd be. It's, it's really remarkable. Is that right? Yeah. I thought he'd be great. I didn't think he'd be this great. What's better than you expected, Greg? His ability to get the ball out so fast. His feel in the pocket when the pressure's coming. He knows where his weaknesses are. I mean, a lot of guys, they don't even want to acknowledge weaknesses. Well, he knows where his protection is weak. 
Did you want to acknowledge your weaknesses? <laughs> I had too many to acknowledge. <laughs> but I, when you really think about it, I mean, some guys, especially young players, they want to beat blitzes with athleticism. He doesn't. He wants to hang in there, buy time, knows he might get hit, but he delivers the football. That's something you don't know until he's actually facing live bullets, and he didn't do that until he was facing Miami earlier this year. And he's, I think, just way ahead of schedule with his development. Heisman candidate, certainly. Yes, absolutely. Any list without him on it is a list with no credibility. You could argue that Will Anderson should be on the list, too. There he is again. Fourth down, they've had some greats come through here defensively, including the University of Alabama, the National Football Foundation, and the College Football Hall of Fame. Today honored E.J. Jr. with a NFF Hall of Fame on-campus salute. Former Tide defender became the 19th Crimson Tide player in the College Football Hall of Fame. Jr., three-time All-SEC pick, and the Tide went 44-4 and with him on the field. Punt for Tennessee. Alabama will get it back. I mean, it looks like fireworks went off here with all the haze, but it's cigar smoke. All right, two and a half to go. Who's your coach of the year in the SEC right now? It's tough because there's been a lot of teams that have overperformed. And frankly, if Tennessee would have pulled it off tonight, we would have had to scratch this. Huh. But if you look at Georgia, Based on where they're at right now, they're 7-0. Preseason expected them to be at 6-1 and at this point. He, of course, is the leader in the clubhouse. Followed closely by Mark Stoops. CFPI thought they'd be 4-3. and They're 6-1 and with some very notable victories. And how about Brian Harson? I know a lot of people still a little bit, I don't know, we'll see. But my goodness, he's taken a team that's razor thin and played extremely well. And then, of course, Lane Kiffin with what they've done up to this point. Hard to keep him off your short list as well. Dousing LSU today as Trey Sanders has come into the game. Great comeback story for Alabama. And second down coming up. So who would you pick though? I mean, who's your pick? We just showed everybody. Who's your pick? Take one. At this point, I would have to go with Kirby Smart. I mean, he's undefeated. And the team right now is playing better than anybody in college football, not just offensively, but defensively as well. And by the way, one thing that the other teams have not had to deal with, he hasn't had a starting quarterback. I mean, he's had Stetson Bennett out there, who's a good player, a solid player. But you lose JT Daniels early in the year, who you thought was going to be your bread and butter. And yet, the team is still just as bit as good as, as you ever thought they'd be. It's, it's been remarkable to watch Kirby Smart so far. What matters most to you in a coach of the year, Greg? Probably overperforming expectations. And you thought and wondered with Georgia more specifically. They've been great on defense for a long time. They're still great on defense. We know that. They have excellent personnel. He's been tenacious on the recruiting trail. But now the offense is really starting to complement that defense, being able to run the ball, being able to throw the ball, being able to create big plays. And he did so with the supporting cast at wide receiver that not a lot of people knew a whole lot about. So. I think he's been excellent, and then I think also to Kentucky, if you don't consider what Mark Stoops has done, went out, made a great hire of Liam Cohen in the offseason, the offensive coordinator, and look at the results. They've been excellent as well. There's Sanders, who came back from that awful car accident and scored a touchdown in the Miami game. First down, Alabama, and here comes the roar of the crowd. Nick Saban was apoplectic at points tonight and really frustrated on and off that headset, but now he's clapping through the victory cigar smoke, and Alabama is going to go to 7-1, and one. but they got a game effort from Tennessee in this rivalry. They did, and I think if you don't acknowledge the improvement from Tennessee, you're doing that staff a real disservice, man. Round of applause for Tennessee and their players. They played their hearts out tonight. Now, the final score indicates a one-sided defeat. It was not that. Alabama got away late, but Tennessee played so incredibly hard, and they deserve to be commended for the effort they put forth. Even so, 15 straight in the series. Alabama beats Tennessee 52-24. Final thoughts? Just an impressive performance, and this is an ideal setup for Nick Saban. He goes into the bye week with about a million coachable moments from this game, so he'll be able to work on those throughout next week and get this team ready for the home stretch.
We say farewell from Tuscaloosa. Final score, Alabama 52, Tennessee 24. For our entire crew, Katie George, Greg McElroy, I'm Jason Benetti saying good night from Tuscaloosa. Coming up next, and I mean right now, it is top ranked boxing from Atlanta. The venerable Joe Tessator is there, and so is Muhammad Ali's grandson, Nico, coming to the ring right now.